Let's start off with the right hand of line one. Two, three. Okay, so I went up to bar four there. Let's just check bar four. That little uh, crush note. And the curved line at the end uh, here is a slur. That is a slur, S-L-U-R. And at the end of a slur, you normally just leave a tiny moment of silence just to phrase it off. And then it goes back to that opening theme. Left hand. We have an Alberti bass pattern. Okay, so that is uh, the same. Oh, in fact, just to finish the next bar, is uh, it's the same pattern throughout the whole of line one. Um, something to notice uh, on that line is that every Alberti bass starts with finger five. Five. So we put it together slowly. Now the first thing you may notice is that the fives come together. As a beginner, I would always sort of write this in my book. I put a five in the middle of the score and then I would circle both notes, okay? Just like that. Uh, and then we'll try again. So fives. And now, actually it's middles. Now you may also notice that it's both Bs on both hands. Um, so you could either write B in the middle of the score or three. Some of your teachers may hate notation on the score, but I don't. Ultimately, we just need to learn these pieces uh, and enjoy them. We don't need to make it any harder than it already is. Don't forget that that first uh, note in the left hand is a sharp. Uh, it is in the key signature, but you know, it is worth notating a couple of sharps near the beginning of a piece in case you forget. Okay, uh, I mean, the hardest thing is getting this type of uh, piano playing hands together. I set my pupils this task of doing the Alberti bass game. So make sure you can do this and talk at the same time. Uh, another challenge, try and spell your name. My name's Joel, so J-O-E-L. Now, if you find that easy, try and spell your name backwards. Even I find this hard, so L. I have to think E-O-J, okay? So practice a lot of time on that left hand, and then... The left hand goes on autopilot. You shouldn't have to think about this. Muscle memory takes over, and you can think about the lovely singing line. <laughs> let's carry on. Now, all right, let's look at the left first, because the left immediately is like, whoa, big jump here. It's an octave, okay? So... From the end of that first Bertie bass section, uh, between these two notes, D to D, is an octave. I might write that in if it's something I feel I need to remind myself. Middle C, F sharp. Now that is something I would practice a lot of times. It's a tricky jump from an easy shape to a tricky shape. Uh, notice what I just did there. I played all of the notes of the Bertie bass and then I played all of the notes. So by doing that, it can really be helpful. Learn the chord shapes. Okay, let's carry on. Uh, what have we got next? D. G, G, G. Now, actually, I had one quick look at this before I filmed it. I've already written in five, four, three on the left hand there. Uh, just to remember that it's a, a bit of a scale. The right hand from bar five. One, two, three, and four, and. Okay, so here's our perhaps our first little tricky rhythm. The minim attached to a quaver. One, two, three, and four, and is the rhythm. So we get this. One, two, 
three and four and. Here we go, bar five to bar eight. That's a lovely end of the phrase there. We're into a new section. Okay, let's have a look at it. It's quiet here. Now I wrote, I've written a finger number on my score. Starting with the left, five, one, close the gaps. Something you hear my, my pupils hear me say all the time. Close the gaps, two, four, I've written. I'm guessing then it'll be a five on the F sharp, a four on the G, thumb on the D. So here we go from the end of bar eight, the last two quavers. Just got to bar 12 there. Let's put it together. Bar End of bar 8 to the beginning of bar 12. Okay, that takes us to the, uh, to the end of, uh, the middle of bar 12. So, let's have a look. Um, let's have a look from the end of bar 12 in the right hand. Isn't this repeated material? Yes, it is. Uh, the ending is slightly different. Da, 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 da. It goes up, doesn't it? Before I think it came down. So these bars here, bar 13, 14, 15, is the same as 9, 10, 11. Okay, so we've got some repeated material. Is the left the same? The left is almost the same. It's got a D in between every note. So where we had, so we have the, so starting on bar 13, and we go up to middle C, D, B, D. I use finger two on G. If you want to impress your piano teacher, you can say in your next lesson, uh, whatever your piano teacher's name is, let's pretend they're called um, Derek. Derek, isn't that low D note called a pedal note, you could say? Uh, so any note that's repeated like that is in piano is called a pedal note. So see if you can impress your piano teacher next time and say, is this bit here called a pedal note? The D is the pedal note. So let's put it together from the end of bar 12. So. Now I've written a three on that F sharp there and a one. Obviously when I played it before, my fingers got a little confused. So I've just written a three and a one. Strangely, I didn't write it the first time, but I guess because of all these extra Ds kind of in the middle now, it makes it a bit trickier. Let's try it again from the end of 12. I don't know how sensitive this microphone is, but a very big plane just flew over. Don't know if you heard it. Sorry if you did. Here you go again, just from the end of 12. Carrying on from the end of 16. Right hand only. I've lost track. Now this is the problem, when you get a section where it's like DZ, 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 uh, if you don't follow along or if you don't count in your head, then you will lose track. So D, you might want to count these. One, two, three, four, one, two, three. My goodness me, that's a lot of D and C sharps. D, C, D, C, three, four, one, two, three. And then we're back to this. This is repeated material. Same as the beginning. And that is 
all the same as the beginning. So that brings us to the end of Allegro. So this video is just to help with getting some of the fingers right and getting some of those rhythms right. Good luck on Allegro!